Um, so I'm Helen Dodd and thanks all for joining us. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Start sending lots of messages if you can't. Um, so I'm going to be talking about play in relation to emotional well-being. And um, this is relevant here for two reasons. One is that play can be really helpful when children are feeling a bit stressed and things are a bit tense and there's lots of transitions happening. And also because lots of you will be at home now with your children and wondering what you should be doing with them all day. And so I want to give some advice and draw on some research to help people, um, parents in particular, to be thinking about what ideally they should be doing with their children whilst they're at home. So as Polly already mentioned, you know, this is a time of uncertainty and when people feel uncertain, all of us, regardless of how, anxi- how anxious we are, when things are uncertain, we feel more anxious and more worried than we usually do. For some people, uncertainty is particularly difficult um, and they will feel lots of anxiety and worry that's driven by the uncertainty. That's really tricky at the moment because it is an uncertain time. This isn't something that we can resolve. We cannot give certainty. So if you have a child who finds uncertainty difficult, you know, you can't promise them that in three weeks time school's gonna reopen and they're going to be back. We just don't know. And so really as parents um, and as other um, adults supporting young people who might be struggling with uncertainty, the best approach right now, whilst we don't know, is to say, you know, this is hard, acknowledge that uncertainty and explain to them that we don't know um, and for now we just need to be okay with not knowing. Um, So it might be this, it might be that, we don't know and we need to all work on just being okay with not knowing Um, uh, but just really acknowledging that yes it is difficult and it is a bit rubbish and I wish I could give you the answers but I don't have them right now so we're just going to have to cope with not knowing. One of the things that can be really helpful when children feel uncertain, lots of uncertainty, is for them to have opportunity to feel a little bit of control. So Polly talked about when control can kind of become too much and they become very controlling and and very rigid in their behaviour and you need to look out for that. But if you have a child who's struggling with uncertainty, looking out for opportunities where you could give them some control um, could help them to feel a little bit better about the uncertainty. So some certainty can come from things like having a bit of normality, which Polly also spoke about, about kind of trying to stick to some kind of routine and um, have regular things in your day, which resemble how you lived your life before we were all in this situation. To try and keep to those routines and have some structure to your day. So there's some certainty and some normality um, where possible. The other thing that can be really helpful for children in terms of feeling that sense of control is having opportunity to engage in what we call free play. So free play uh, happens when a child chooses what they want to do, how they want to do it, and when they want to start and stop. So this isn't about you know you getting out an activity and saying at 10 o'clock we're going to start this activity and we're going to do it for half an hour and then we'll do something else. But it's just really letting the child work out, you know, I feel like doing this now. I want to do it in this way and they do it until they're ready to stop. So our role as adults to facilitate that kind of free play is to provide them space to do it. So that can be physical space and that they have a place in the house that they know that they can go. It might be in their bedroom, it might be just an area in your lounge, wherever you can work out. But there's some space for them to play and also psychological space. So don't try and fill their day with we're going to do this now and this now and this now, but just a little bit of space for them to explore, you know, what they want to do. There's quite a lot of resources online about um, you know, the benefits of allowing children to feel a bit bored. And that's kind of giving them that psychological space to work out, oh, I'm kind of a bit bored now, and then go and explore and find things to do. Um, our role is to pr- try and provide resources that can stimulate that play. So these, you know, depending on the age of your children, can be almost anything. So yesterday morning I gave my children, for example, some takeaway boxes because we'd had takeaway for Mother's Day. And they use those to play. I didn't tell them what to do with them. I just said, here you go, here are some resources. Here are some things, you know, go do something with them. Um, So it can just be something that stimulates that play. So it might be giving them some chalk and sending them out into the garden, you know, or with older children, you know, it might be getting them to look at a book and think about things that they could recreate around that or, you know, anything that they're interested in, really. But just sometimes those resources can help stimulate that play. And as adults, we should only join in if the child requests that we join in. So really, it's about 
as Kathy talked about, giving the child space, try not to take over, let them lead. If they want you to play with them, great. If they want to be on their own, great. And actually, when this goes well, it should also give adults more space as well, because children can be entertained quite easily on their own, quite happily. We don't need to be structuring all of their day and filling all of their time. And by giving children free play, we should help them to feel that sense of control um, in a positive way. So we know free play is enjoyable, children love doing it. There's a nice quote that um, play is the work of childhood. This is what children are born to do, they enjoy doing it. It can increase their sense of control as we already talked about. It also helps to support the parent-child relationship because the child is leading the play and that can um, lead to nice kind of bonding moments um, and positive parent-child interactions. Play helps children to express themselves. So if they're feeling you know, confused about something or they're upset about something or they're feeling happy, they can use play to help express some of those emotions. So it can be quite helpful in these kind of situations where children might be feeling lots of things in their head and not able to express them. It can also help children make sense of things, which is something that I just wanted to pick up on. And some of you might have noticed that children might be playing coronavirus related games. So coronavirus tag is something that I've observed happening between my children and their friends. They might be playing more games where they're talking about death and illness and viruses and things at the moment. This is totally normal. It shows that they're trying to understand and process what's happening and they're using play as a way to do that. So there's no need to stop that if you notice children playing um, and talking about viruses and death and things in their play because it is actually quite adaptive and it helps them to understand what's going on. But you might want to use it as a cue to pick up in a conversation later on because it might suggest, you know, that they are thinking about these things and they're trying to understand them. So you can use it as a, um, a tool to kind of stimulate a later conversation, but don't feel the need that you need to stop their play and interrupt their play um, because it is related to coronavirus. So there is research into the benefits of free play and particularly free play is beneficial for reducing stress. Um, so. This study, for example, was with children who were in hospital and they were um, stressed because they had chronic health problems. Um, it was a free play intervention. So when children were allocated to a group where they were given more time to just play freely, as we've talked about, this isn't about adults leading a particular activity, but just them working out what they feel like doing, then that showed that their stress reduced. So the physiological um, measures how they're stressed in their body show that they were feeling better having had that free play time. Um, so right now some of our children are probably feeling a bit stressed so hopefully if we can increase the time that they've got to just play freely and explore what they want to do then we should also see some of these reductions in stress. It's important also at this point to point out that you know, when we talk about play we often think about young children, we think about things like playing with Lego or building blocks but all of us play, actually. Um, even adults do things that are playful, things that we enjoy, things that we do just for the sake of doing them. And so try not to be restrictive when you're thinking about that idea of play. If you've got older children, um, it's really about giving them space to do the things that they feel like doing and that they enjoy. And if you've got multiple children at home together, um, free play is a really great way to get siblings working together. And it may be that you need to have a chat with the older sibling, siblings and, and explain that they might need to play at the younger child's level so that they can all play together and maybe reward them if they do a really good job of supporting that child's play. But play can manifest in lots and lots of different ways depending on the age of the child. So this is relevant, you know, even if you're a parent of a teenager. The other thing that we know is really relevant for reducing stress is having contact with nature. Now, obviously, this is now you know, significantly being reduced because we're told we can only go out once a day. But we know from research that contact with nature affects mood, it decreases stress. So if you're lucky enough to have a garden, even if you've got you know, a balcony and there's some, you can do some plants or do some weeding and plant pots and things, any kind of contact with nature um, does reduce stress. And if you've got that one opportunity a day to get out and do some exercise, if it's possible for you to do so where you're living, um, take the opportunity to spend that time in nature. So go for a walk, go for a bike ride, 
We know that physical activity is beneficial for stress. So if you can do that physical activity in nature, that's even better. So you're getting that physical activity benefit and the benefits of being in nature. And the important thing here is that everyone benefits. So this isn't something you're just doing for your child's stress, but if you go with them and you go on those walks or those bike rides with your children in nature, your stress levels will also come down. Less stressed parents, less stressed child um, is better for everybody.